going into recession. That's coming up today on Business Matters. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm your host, Don Ma, starting off with markets as usual. U.S. Uh, major indexes here, pretty flat for the day. The Nasdaq up a third of a percent, S&P and Dow barely changed. But the biggest loser here today was pharmacy chain Walgreens. We'll have a bit more on that later in the show. Uh, but shares of chip maker Micron also tumbled a little bit in early trading. It's down around 7% for the day. So Micron seemingly failed to impress investors with its quarterly revenue forecast. It's one of the few companies making high bandwidth memory chips that power advanced AI systems. Its shares have more than doubled in the past year. So Micron announcing a sold out chips for this year and the next and announcing that it's forecasting fourth quarter revenue to rise about 90%. But despite all this, it seems like investors need even better results from the AI industry. All right, moving on from that, the biggest banks in the US could be more vulnerable compared to a year ago. That's according to the Federal Reserve's annual bank resilient test, which was released yesterday. The review found that banks could suffer higher losses if a significant economic downturn were to hit now versus compared to last year. So as a result of the banking crisis that fueled the Great Recession, the Fed conducts stress tests to monitor and uncover potential signs of weakness in the financial system. And the tests took on an extra layer of importance after the collapse of three U.S. banks last year. We all remember that. However, the Fed also says that America's biggest banks are still well positioned to survive a severe recession while continuing to lend it to households and businesses. Meanwhile, the total number of Americans collecting benefits is now at the highest level in more than two years. And that number is up for the eighth straight week to 1.8 million. That's for the week of June 15th. Also, bleak news here for any would-be first-time home buyers out there. Bank of America says U.S. home prices will stay high and the housing shortage will continue. And as a character here on top of that, mortgage rates aren't going to fall much. Triple whammy, it looks like. So the bank warned that the U.S. housing market is stuck and it's going to remain stuck until 2026 or even later. The median price of a previously owned home is up for the 11th month straight to a record $419,300. Plus, those who may want to sell are in a lock-in effect. So this is when they bought their home uh, locked in with low mortgage rates. But to buy now at current rates would require paying much more monthly on interest alone. Now, yeah. Bank of America expects the lock-in effect to hold for another <coughs> Thanks, six Uncle Joe. to eight years. All right, on to the economy. Latest data shows that the U.S. is growing at the slowest pace since spring 2022. And this is based on official GDP data. So then the question is, how exactly is the U.S. economy doing? Are we going to face a recession? I asked these questions. The chief U.S. economist at S&P Global Ratings, Satyam Pante. All right. Thank you so much for your time today, Satyam. Pleasure to have you on the show. So let's talk about the health of the economy here. We, you know, we had a, a number of economic data um, out recently, uh, including today, the uh, third GDP estimate for quarter one. Uh, just, just give us a general view here. What kind of picture is the is it painting based on the data? Well, uh, you know, there are some mixed signals that are coming through, but the GDP growth rate we expect it to come below potential the long run potential for some period in the coming quarters, and that will get us to about 1.8 percent on a year over year basis in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, you know, given how strong last year's second half was, that still makes it look like this year's annual average basis is going to be 2.5. So there is a bit of a, uh, uh, you know, statistical, uh, uh, you know, caveat here where this year, even though it's going to be the same as last year's annual average, we are actually slowing down as the quarter goes by versus last year we were actually picking up growth. Um, for next year, we have it at 1.7%, which is below long-run potential. That's the correction year, and then it starts to move back up again as the Fed uh, lowers its rates. What are the 
chances of a recession coming on? So right now, we peg a recession probability of about 25 to 30%, you know, uh, for a recession starting within the next 12 months. And there are reasons for that. That's an elevated, you know, twice the normal that you would expect in a given time. Uh, and, you know, there are reasons for that, especially one that comes from the Federal Reserve themselves holding the interest rate as restrictive as they are right now. Uh, and given some of the geopolitical uncertainty in this world, uh, we think that uh, the risk of a recession is still a bit elevated than that. Right. I mean, it's not for sure. I mean, one in four chance, uh, the likelihood of a recession is is on the side that it won't happen. But it's still not something we should scoff at. Right. Because we're talking about millions of people, thousands of people potentially losing their jobs. Uh, tell us more about that. Well, you know, in a recessions in general, they come in different forms. Um, at the moment, at least, uh, we are of the view, even if there were to be a downturn in the economy, it may be more of a cyclical correction rather than, you know, for example, what we saw back it's in the It's the stakeholder economy. Financial crisis. Uh, the financial stability report that came out of the Fed shows that we're not too worried about the financial stability at hand currently. But still, there will be a cyclical correction in the macroeconomy. And maybe if, if we were to have a recession, it is more like the one we saw back in 2001, 2002, uh, when you know, things did sort of have a downturn, but we didn't really see a, uh, you know, unemployment rise by too much. Uh, so more of a light version of a recession more than anything else. But again, even that, we don't think that's the baseline case. We're still in the soft landing view, but there's always that uh, chance. Uh, where do you see unemployment rate headed? Uh, we think unemployment rate is going to be drifting up from here on now. Uh, and it's again, it's part of that cyclical correction that one should expect coming in with a low potential real GDP growth that we are forecasting. Uh, we think unemployment rate is likely going to top out about 4.5% next year. Uh, right now we're at 4%, and it has been moving up from 3.4% cycle low. So we are on that way up towards a longer run steady state. All right, very well said here today. Satyam Pandey, Chief U.S. Economist at S&P Global Ratings. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Is your neighborhood drugstore going away? Well, I hope not. But with that being said, Walgreens is set to close a substantial number of its roughly 8,600 locations across the U.S. So Walgreens shares were down a massive 22 percent on just the news. And this comes as the drugstore chain looks to fix its struggling business. The pharmacy chain didn't announce a specific number of store closures. Uh, but it says the closures will focus on those locations that are not profitable or, or they're too close to each other or potentially struggling with shoplifting losses. And as I mentioned at the beginning, Boeing in trouble here. So it spoke in a briefing this morning about the door plug that blew off the 737 MAX 9 jet back in January. But government regulators actually say Boeing wasn't allowed to speak to the media like that. It's now sanctioning Boeing for releasing what it calls non-public investigative information to the media and referring Boeing to the DOJ. The playmaker will also have to appear at an investigative hearing in Washington, D.C. At the press briefing this morning, Boeing said the reason the door plug flew off the 737 in January was that paperwork was never made by a group that fixed it. And as a result of that, no one knew the plug needed bolts after it was put back on. Okay, top YouTubers here, raking in millions of pounds.